Rick Smits is, to this day, the best Dutch basketball player to ever touch the court in the NBA. The 7'4 Pacers legend spent 12 years in the league from 1988 to 2000. But how good was this behemoth of an NBA player actually? How's it going guys? Today we are going to take a closer look into the basketball career of Rick Smits, also known as the Dunking Dutchman. Growing up in the Netherlands Rick Smits was born on August 23, 1966, in Eindhoven, a city in the Netherlands. Growing up, Rick was always taller than his peers. He tried playing different sports, such as soccer, rugby, and judo, but these sports never really suited him. Until he started playing basketball at the age of 14, he always thought his length was a liability rather than an advantage. Rick was a fast learner, and with his incredible length, he quickly became a solid basketball player. Because Rick was 7'4", a Marist College scout offered him a scholarship without even seeing him play. He said to Rick, quote, I can teach basketball, but I can't teach length. College career Smits left the Netherlands, all alone in the summer of 1984, to play basketball at Marist College in Poughkeepsie. Due to a teammate's injury, he became the starting center after only eight games. His success from day one was built on dedication, often staying after practice or working between classes. His payoff? Helping Morris to bring home an ECAC title and lead Morris to an NCAA appearance. The dunking Dutchman quote, College was great, maybe even better than the NBA itself. The Dutchman was drafted second overall by the Pacers in 1988, which started off his NBA career at 21 years old. He was viewed as a huge talent. Due to a career-ending injury to Steve Stepanovich, the former starter for the Pacers at the start of the 1988-89 NBA season, Rick became a starting center in his rookie year. Averaging 11.7 points per game and 6.1 rebounds per game, he managed to get into the NBA All-Rookie First Team. He continued to average double-digit points over the next couple of years of his NBA career, but he was still a very unpolished basketball player and still had loads to learn. It wasn't until the 1993-94 NBA season that Smits really came into his own as a team leader. Rick Smits was arguably one of the eight best centers in the 90s and the second option behind his teammate Reggie Miller on a deep Pacers team. Rick had a soft touch around the basket, and he was one of the best shooters among centers shooting above an average of 50% for his entire career. Rick Smith's best season was probably the 1995-1996 NBA season. He averaged 18.5 points per game. The Dutchman endeared himself to Pacers fans with outstanding playoff performances, most notably in Game 4 of the 1995 Eastern Conference Finals, where he made a buzzer-beating shot to tie the series. Jackson on the bounce with eight. Reggie from the wing. Hey! And it goes out of Hardaway out near the midcourt line, driving on Workman. He forces up the three. He hit it. He hit it. He hit it. He hit it. He can't find an open man. Flips it to the big fella. Fake shoots and hits. In 1998, Rick Smits made the All-Star team for the first and only time in his career. In that same year, they took the back-to-back -back Chicago Bulls with prime Michael Jordan to seven games in the Eastern Conference Finals. Aftermath. Rick had issues with his feet for most of his NBA career because he developed nerve damage in his feet from wearing tight shoes as a teenager. He decided to retire in the year 2000. After retirement, the dunking Dutchman was selected to the Pacers' 40th anniversary team, which was chosen by the fans. He ended up with the fourth most votes after spending his entire 12-year career in Indianapolis. Thanks for watching.